it's, it's, it's still hot. <laughs> Here we are, my dear fellow, the, uh, the Vagabonds Club. Mm. I find the English a most extraordinary race. Uh, uh, what's that, I beg your pardon? Oh, uh, do let me help you down there, boy. I thank you. <laughs> um, how much do I owe you, Cabby? Two shillings, sir. Mm. Mm. Extraordinary? This imposing house is surely a meeting place for gentlemen of independent means, a wealthy and I would hazard... An exclusive group? Oh, I, I don't know about that. Oh, th keep the change, Kevin. Oh, thank you, sir. And yet, you call yourselves the Vagabonds. Uh, and why not? <laughs> Damn it, you have to call the club something. So you choose the Vagabonds with that English understatement, that little private smile of amusement at the paradox. <laughs> well, uh, what's in a name? Huh? <laughs> oh, forgive me. You see, I speak as a musician an artist, and we are regarded as rogues and vagabonds in all seriousness. Oh, come, 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 <laughs> my dear good man. <laughs> the artist has an honored place in our society. I am glad you think so. Hmm. It, 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 shall we go in? Good evening, Mr. Harvard. Ah, oh, good evening, James. I, uh, I have a guest tonight. Uh, yes, sir. If you just sign the visitor's book. Yes, of course, sir. Mm. Uh, uh, let me have the pen. Uh, sir. I'll uh, be with you in a moment. Ah, you must vouch for my respectability, or I shall not even be admitted. Oh, uh, upon my word, you prickly fellow. <laughs> this is a private club, Mr. Hyman. We have certain rules. Ah, good evening, Stephen. Ah, John. Uh, you're not going, I hope. I'm on my way home, yes. Uh, my coat, please, and call me a cab. Yes. Oh, uh, stay and have dinner with us. Oh, I'm sorry, I've made my arrangements now. A uh, drink at least. Uh, let me introduce my friend, uh, Mr. Mr. Isidore Heim. A pleasure, sir. How do you do? Uh, Stephen, you'll have to excuse me. I'm late already. Uh, 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 goodbye, Mr. Heim. Uh, goodbye, Dr. Silent. Hmm? You know my name? Have we met before? No, Dr. Silent. I became... Aware of your identity, that is all. And you are... Isadore Hyman. Ah, yes. I, I've been unpardonably slow. I didn't recognize your friend, Stephen. You are a very great artist, Mr. Hyman. <laughs> I regret profoundly that I cannot join you tonight. I should have been glad of your acquaintance. We shall meet again, I think. Why, yes. Yes, I think we shall. Your cap, sir. Ah, thank you. Good night, good night. Uh, uh, good night, John. Oh, dear, what a pity. Uh, so you've heard of John Silence, have you? We have um, a certain interests in common. Really? Hmm. Uh, upstairs, my dear chap, we'll take a glass of sherry in the drawing room. What I wish to know, Stephen, is how you met the man. Ah, in Germany, he was giving a concert in Munich, and some a mutual acquaintance took me round to meet him. Curious fellow. He has a curious reputation. Hmm. Uh, uh, to tell the truth, I find Hyman's stuff a bit highbrow. Then how did you come to be giving him dinner at the Vagabonds Club? Ah, well, he has a series of concerts in London this month and was civil enough to leave his card. Yes, but why you? In confidence, John, he needs a favor. A small service. He came out to the during dinner. Well? The fact is, the man's a stranger in London. He's asked me to buy a violin for him. <laughs> I am to purchase a guarnerius, which I shall find in a small antique shop in Chelsea. A guarnerius? That's a rare treasure, certainly. Does one exist in London? And what prevents Mr. Hyman from going to buy it himself? They uh, dislike him. Strange. Oh, this is no ordinary shop. Uh, two brothers run the place. They're not pressed for money, and they will not sell to Mr. Hyman, or so he says. We are left with the question, why you? He believes I might have better luck, and he trusts me, I suppose. Oh, my dear good man, you are eminently trustworthy. When do you propose to buy this marvellous violin? Mm. Uh, sometime today. Then I shall be happy to accompany you to the shop. <laughs> Good heavens, you think me incapable of running a small errand. No, 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 no. 
Now, but there is some mystery here, Stephen. And I find myself profoundly disturbed by Mr. Isidore Hyman. Oh, what an amazing place, John. Look at that Jane Buddha. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And that painting. It must surely be a Renoir. Mm, a tiny stock of articles, but all of them quite exquisite. We're dealing here with connoisseur, I think. Mm. Oh, I see the owner in that back room. Mm -hmm. The old man in a velvet jacket and smoking cap. Oh, God bless us all. There are two of them. Good afternoon, sir. Fine day. Fine day, sir. Good afternoon. We were admiring your taste, Mr. Gilmer, sir. And this is my brother, William. William Gilmer, sir, my brother's name being Arthur. <laughs> How's it do? Oh, you've come with an introduction, no doubt. An introduction, yes, they always come with that. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> it just happened to be passing. <laughs> Casual impulse, no more. Now, my friend wishes to buy a violin. <laughs> oh, a musical gentleman, Billy. As you say, Arthur, a man of music. Uh, please come this way, sir. Uh, we keep all valuable instruments at the back of the shop. Uh, For any particular reason? Uh, things get moved. Sir, oh dear, me, yes. Yes, yes, we really kind of have the move. Uh, uh, mind the step. Uh, and your head, sir, the beam is somewhat low. Not that it bothers us, William and I being on the short side. On the short side, as you can see. <laughs> uh, to business, Arthur? Uh, to business, certainly. You're interested in any particular craftsman, sir? You have a, a design, a period in your mind? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Is, uh, is that a Guarnerius over there? No. No. I, uh, I had some notion of obtaining a Guarnerius for my collection. You have a collection of violins? Collect violins, do you, sir? Uh, why, yes, yes. No, that is not in the least like a Guarnerius, sir. Guarnerius is entirely different, sir. Uh, <coughs> Have you got such an instrument? Arthur? William? Oh, dear me. It is not on display, sir, and it is most emphatically not for sale. No, no, no. It has never been for sale. Uh, let me explain. Uh, money is no object in this case. I can meet any price you care to name. Really, sir, yes, sir. Quite impossible, sir. That's the question, will you? I told you, Martha. Uh, you, you will at least permit me to, 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 to look at the thing. There would be no object in it, sir. There would be no point. No point at all. In that case, Stephen, we'd better go. Mm. Uh, should you change your mind, here is my card. Oh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Stephen. Uh, good day, gentlemen. Mind your head. Mind the step. Oh. Upon my soul, did you ever see a more ridiculous couple? Two little old men echoing each other like West African parrots. I doubt you've recut a much better figure. Good heavens, you, you don't think they suspected me? My dear friend, I'm quite certain they did. I've never seen a countenance more compounded of guilt. And when in your nervousness you pointed to an instrument that even I could recognize as a viola, the only possible course open to us seemed instant flight. Oh, confound it. I've been most devilish clumsy. Mm. No matter. You can at least give Hyman the consoling information that the brothers refuse to sell to anybody. They have no particular animus against him. <laughs> I declare they're still watching us from the window. Look. Now one of them has moved to the doorway. Ah, let's call a cab. Tell me, does Hyman play tonight at the Queen's Hall? I believe so, yes. I have a fancy to attend the concert. Excellent, why not? Uh, they may be sold out, but I can make inquiries when I give Mr. Hyman the uh, unhappy news. Ah, uh, there's a cab. Cab! Cab! A packed house? Hmm. Your friend Hyman commands a great following. Oh, he's immensely popular, John. In Germany, he was mobbed wherever he went. Crowds besieged the concert hall. It is a grave responsibility. Hmm? Oh, what? To possess such wondrous talent. Ah. Well, how did he take your news? Oh, extremely ill. He stared at me with those queer foreign eyes. And his eyes are yellow, upon my word. The strangest thing, a, a kind of yellowy brown. Then he spat, a habit I detest, and sprang away into the mist. Uh, 
It has been worrying me all afternoon, Arthur. Uh, do you suppose those two men were sent by him? Sent by him? Oh, why sent by him? Oh, no, no, no. They couldn't have been sent by him. He is in London. Look, I, I, I will not be browbeaten. The instrument belongs to us. If we choose not to sell, that is our privilege. Now, have you bolted the door? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Good. Uh, a foggy night. The mist is drifting down from the rooftops, clinging to the lampposts like so many cobwebs. Is the window fastened tight? <laughs> Why do you ask? Uh, because damp air is harmful, brother. It endangers the health. Oh, half past seven. Let's see it. Come into the back room. Bring the lamp with you. Right. Bring the lamp. Yes. What is it? Where are you? What have you done with the lamp? I missed my footing on the stair. Oh, dear me. Oh, are you hurt? No, 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 no. Just my ankle. I seem to have smashed the lamp. How dreadfully careless. You must have a candle. Right. Stay where you are. Uh, mind how you go. There's broken glass and paraffin all over the floor. Half past seven. He's late. Mm. Oh, no doubt the fog has delayed him. I oh, know. We are about to begin, I think. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is with the greatest pleasure we welcome Mr. Isidore Hyman. Handsome devil, wouldn't you say? In the grip of some obsession. Uh, why that? Well, my dear friend, from your own experience. And from my own observation. Look at his hand. See how he clenches them, even as he bows and smiles. And, uh, have you got the program there? What's he playing first? A uh, sonata by... Uh, oh, see for yourself. Oh, another of those modern composers. Hmm. certainly worked magic on the fiddle. Mind you, I, I liked his music concert better. You would have enjoyed that program, John. Shh. Stephen, I entreat you to be silent. Oh, yes, yes, yes quite right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Has he fainted? Oh, my God, what's happened? Calm yourself. He must be ill. He is moving. But why don't they do something? Why don't they get him off? Follow me, Stephen. They shouldn't crowd round him, you know. That exit over there. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, excuse me, madam. The stage door will be at the back of the building, I assume. I, I, I can find then it. Then do so at once. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. I'm uh, trying to reach the gangway. Uh, excuse me. Why is the light so bad? You have placed the candle too high, brother. I can hardly see. Well, then fetch more tapers. There's a box in the front room. You'll find them near the door. How has the fog got in? The shadows confuse me. They rise and waver. I cannot... <gasps> what is it? Oh, William. Oh, is, is something wrong? Look! Look! Oh, now calm yourself. There's nothing there. Only a patch of darkness staining the wall. The lamplight, shining through our shop window. What is the matter with you? I do not see. Room. Room grows full of mist. He has come. Good evening, gentlemen. Mr. Hyman? Is it you, Mr. Hyman, sir? You take us by surprise. Is my visit so unwelcome, then? How in the name of God did he get in? My dear friend, through the door. How else? But Arthur, Arthur, the door was locked. We thought we had locked the doors, Mr. Hyman. Forgive me if I startled you. I have so little time. I play tonight at the Queen's Hall. Indeed, yes, yes, indeed. We have read the papers. We were expecting... We wish you every success, sir. I thank you. There is a sonata I can only play to perfection on one instrument. Where is it? Arthur? You promised? It grows late, Mr. Hyman. It is not, not convenient. We have a neighbor, sir, the, the noise. 
I regret to disappoint you, but under the circumstances, you must realize... It is not suitable. We do not wish it. So it is out. You turn against me. No, no, I assure you. How often in the past have I played for you? Alone. We are grateful. A great honor. Your music has been a constant delight to us. But you find us in some disorder. My brother has broken the land. And as you say yourself, you must be on your way to the Queen's Hall. I am the master of my time, Arthur Gilmer. Not you. Give me the violin. No, we cannot be discourteous, Arthur. And besides, besides, it would not be sensible to cross him. I am waiting. I shall have to unlock the cabinet. I do not have the key. I do it. Since there's no help for it. Here it is, sir. And now you shall hear true music. <laughs> Good evening. I was in the audience, sir, and came to see if I could offer my assistance. Oh, uh, are you a doctor? We have sent for medical aid. I uh, am a doctor of a kind, and I have the honor to know Mr. Hyam. Oh, thank goodness. It, it was the most appalling shock. They carried him onto the sofa there. I, I've no idea what went wrong. Oh, the heat is devilishly hot in Is there. he conscious? I'm, I'm not sure. But may I get to him, please? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Hyman. Hyman, give it up. You can hear me, you can understand me. I order you to give it up. Mm -hmm. He moved. Hyman, listen to me. I am calling you. Mm -hmm. His eyes flickered. Hyman. Mm -hmm. You. We have met before. Oh, yes. And you are John Silence. I am. Now, lie still. No harm has been done. But I warn you most solemnly, this mischief must stop. I fail to understand you. I think not. Mischief? I do nothing that you have not practiced yourself, John Silence. I am in control of certain mental powers. You are not. You are dabbling in a very dangerous science. With amateur fingers, you would say. Oh, come, man, be reasonable. Would you not laugh if I attempted to play the violin? And do you laugh at me, John Silence? No, I grieve for you. And before God, I warn you. <laughs> Somebody make a statement from the stage, please. Yes, I sir. shall continue my performance uh, in five minutes. Yes, Mr. Simon. <sighs> Now, my dear good fellow, yeah. is that wise? Do you, how, how do you feel? Are you, are you sure you're well enough? I think Mr. Hyman is himself again. Of course. I thank you for your help, sir. But you will not take my help. Ah! How bad. <laughs> how kind of you to trouble yourself. You were in the audience, I suppose? Uh, yes, sir. Can I lean on your arm? I am a little weak still. Uh, yes, of course. Blame your English weather. Blame this atrocious fog. <laughs> still... I have an audience waiting, and they shall not be disappointed. I see Hyman was taken ill last night. What has he say, brother? It's an item in the newspaper. He collapsed during the concert at the Queen's Hall, but recovered and uh, oh, finished his performance to scenes. A great applause. He's a great artist, you see, whatever one may think. Uh, why are you frowning? Well, what time did Hyman call on us? What hour? Oh, dear me, I should not like to be precise. Uh, I had been lighting the oil lamp. 7.30, perhaps. Oh, no, Billy. 
Oh, no, 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 no. He was performing at the Queen's Hall at 7.30. It must have been earlier. But I remember, brother, you said it was supper time and you called for a light. Just because of the fog. It, oh, it was no more than six. Of course. But I heard the clocks strike 7.30. Your eyesight is bad. Yes. You heard the quarter strike, not the half. Hyman arrived at 7.15 and left at 7.25. Ah, yes. How sensible you are, Arthur. Getting to the Queen's Hall in five minutes from Chelsea. Oh, God bless my soul. You are determined to make some bit of this. But Arthur, Arthur, he couldn't have done it, Arthur. Well, then it is the fault of the Daily Paper. They are not reliable, the press. Oh, Beyond doubt, the concert must have started at 8.30, not 7. 8. Just so, Arthur. But the poster said 7.30. Oh, it is clear to me that this man Hyman is upset. Now I must consider your health. You are no longer young. I'm the same age as before, Arthur. One year younger than yourself. Well, I will not have you made uneasy. I suggest we send a letter to Mr. Hyman... Thanking him for his interest, his past kindness, and saying we do not wish to do business with him anymore. Agreed. Agreed. Let me fetch paper and ink. I see there's a mention of it in the Daily News. What's that? Ah, yes, I'll have a small brandy, waiter. Yes, sir. Mm. Isidore Hyman's collapse at the Queen's War. Hmm. But no word of your part in the affair, which I consider devilish unjust. Oh, Stephen, Stephen, I had no part in the affair. I merely offered my services, which were declined. You must not take offence. I suppose I know the fellow rather better than you do. Oh, these bohemians. I shall not apologise for intruding at your club. I am extremely angry. I told the gentleman to wait downstairs, sir. Oh, all right, James, no matter. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, Mr. Hyman. Mm. Uh, can I offer you a drink, sir? You cannot. I demand an answer. What have you said to the Gilmer brothers? Uh, nothing, upon my word. Indeed, I, I have not seen them since the day I failed lamentably to buy your violin. Do you then swear you are not responsible for this? I beg your pardon. What is it? I've not got my glasses. You will permit me? Oh, read it. Read it. I care not who sees the monstrous ingratitude of these fools. Mm -hmm. But, Mr. Hyman, this is an entirely courteous note. Mm. Merely stating they see no reason to do business with you in the future. They cannot mean I it. I feel sure they do. And surely, surely, since they will not part with the violin, there is no more to be said. Two old men, senile, doddering, and they possess this wonder. Merely by the accident of having made money at their wretched trade. Oh, come, come. Their business is honourable. And the making of money has not yet fallen into disrepute. The violin is their property, Hyman. They cannot even play it. They keep it locked away in a glass cabinet, and then they send for me. They sit nodding and grinning while the Guanarius sings. You do not have to play to them. How else can I get my hands on it? With such a magnificent instrument, I could astonish the world. You have already done so, my friend. Be content. Why should my talent be treated? Why should I be denied my spirit will not rest till I have it? And surely there is a way. Wait. Ah, yes. You have my letter, thank you. Now, oh, Hyman, be careful. Why? Do you fear I shall resort to armed robbery, Dr. Simon? I know what it is I fear, and so do you. Since first we met, I've been aware of your danger. Let us speak plainly, sir. You are a man of some power. I recognize you. We meet as equals. We are not as other men, John Silence. To you, I give my respect, my admiration. Together, we can achieve... No! Oh, forgive me. I have no manners. I am an uneducated foreigner interrupting two English gentlemen at their club. How can I apologize? Goodbye, Mr. Hammer. Uh, look here, my dear fellow. I warn you most solemnly. You forget I am Isadore Hyman. I... I warn you. Of what? 
of yourself. You are dealing in matters you do not understand. You walk in peril. But I am not afraid. Good night to you. My colleague who will not be my friend. Oh. Extraordinary chair. What the devil did he mean? I fear for that man. Talks a little wildly, I confess. It's the artistic temperament, you know. One, one can do nothing but ignore it. Oh, Stephen. Uh, where are you going? I have some shopping to finish. At this hour? Uh, but John, uh, John, you've not even had your brandy. Uh, oh, wait for me. Ah, good evening, sir. We were about to close the door. The door, as you see, was nearly closed. Could you spare a moment? I find myself in need of a trifling present for a friend. A uh, paperweight might be suitable. Yeah, uh, paperweight, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, glass or bronze? We have a fine selection. Ah, thank you. Let me see both. Uh, mm. Ah, yes. Yes, I think I can make a choice from these. Charming. Tell me, I believe you have a customer, an acquaintance of mine, mm -hmm. the celebrated violinist Isidore Hyman. This is persecution. Hmm? I protest, I protest. This is less than honest. Uh, and you, you have been here before, I think. Uh, he has, he has. I remember his face. Oh, forgive me. I mean no harm. What do you want of us? Isidore Hyman has received a letter. So soon? I took it round by hand, brother. I thought there must be no mistake. He cannot then say that he has not received it. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We are grateful to the gentleman, but our mind is made up. We do not wish any further commitment. Mm, I see. Allow me, however, to explain myself. I, I have no direct contact with him, only mm. a very great interest in the matter. What does he say, brother? What does he want? Why have you broken off your dealings with Mr. Hyman? Oh, come, come, such a connection could be to your advantage. Do you dislike Mr. Hyman personally? Or is there, perhaps, something you fear? Arthur? Really? Oh, we should sound absurd. Oh, oh, dear me. We should be thought ridiculous. We are old men, sir. If we can be permitted our fancies. Of course. Yet I should like to know what it is you fancy. Yes. Sir, what time did Hyman play at the Queen's Hall yesterday? Why, half past seven. Uh, that was the advertised performance, sir. But did he begin on time? Oh, within a minute or two. You see? Ah, but did, are you certain? I was in the audience myself. You, you saw Hyman? I can assure you that he was playing in the Queen's Hall about half past seven. Oh, God! Yeah. But the thing is not possible! What, what troubles you, my friend? Uh, we have a violin, sir, which your friend Hyman desires. It is our property. We have a natural anxiety that... No more? Now, listen to me. Do not distress yourselves. Do not be afraid. And above all, do not let your mind stampede you into some panic action. Arthur, Arthur, what does he mean, Arthur? Merely this. The violin, I take it, is safely locked away. We keep it in the back room, sir, inside a glass cabinet with wooden sides. It's locked, locked, securely locked. We are not irresponsible, I assure you. I carry the key on my watch chain. Yeah. I grow forgetful I am not young, but Arthur has the key. Excellent, so there is no cause for alarm. Yet I should be failing in my duty if I didn't warn you. Of oh, what? Now calm yourselves, my friend. Whatever you see, or may think you see, Above all, remember, there is nothing to fear. I cannot follow. He, he is reassuring us, brother. He is saying that Hyman means no harm. I cannot say that with total confidence, but he can do you no harm. So be easy in your minds. And I promise you, he will forget these dangerous obsessions. How much do I owe you? Sir? What, what, what's he saying now? I have chosen a paperweight, Mr. Gilmer. And I would like to pay for it. Uh, John! Uh, John, over here! Ah, thank you. Uh, uh, seven Ebury Street, driver. You'll uh, join me in a nightcap? I will indeed. 
I find myself exhausted. There are few things so hard as attempting to warn the innocent without alarming a simple nature. Mm. How did you succeed with the brothers, Gilbert? Huh? I'm sorry I forbade you the shop, Stephen. I feared they would recognize you, and I took a pointless precaution as they instantly recognized me. Were you intolerably bored? Uh, not in the least. I've been reading the evening paper. I see our friend Hyman leaves for Italy tomorrow. Indeed. Well, that's good news, if true. When does he return? Not for three months. Then he's to give another concert at the Queen's Hall. Be so good as to book tickets for us. Mm. I should like to enjoy his art without a dramatic interruption. And surely he will forget... I'm making us a jug of cocoa, Billy. Ah, that will be most agreeable. Jug of cocoa, yes. Yeah, if you're coming through into the kitchen, yeah. bring the sugar. Bring the sugar, yes. Mm. Oh, confound it. Now, what's wrong? Oh, who let that cat in? It's not safe, I declare. I nearly lost my balance. The wretched creature ran between my legs. A cat? Oh, you must be mistaken. What? But... There was a sensation of fur against my ankles. Brother, mm. can you not smell it? Oh, dearly, dearly. Oh, dear. oh. oh yes. <laughs> Why, am I never believed. Bless my soul, yes, disgusting. But yes, it's the smell of a tongue. It must be found and removed. Uh, but it's not here, Billy. Oh, oh where is it? Really? Seems to me the cat must somehow have contrived to slip inside the shop during business hours. It's now gone. Leaving a filthy smell behind it. it uh, I saw it outside earlier. A shapeless, furry thing. It sat upon the wall as you let the gentleman out. When was this? Oh, an hour back, Arthur. Uh, the man who bought the paperweight. I thought at the time. It's watching him. How so? As our customer stepped into the street, I caught the yellow flash of eyes, and the notion flipped across my mind. It's watching. Huh. Oh, come. Let's have our coat. Yeah. I'll, I'll open the window. Uh, we must air the place. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't be reasonable. We shall lose custom if I do not get rid of the animal, Rick. Oh, please, please, brother, close the window, I beg you. Uh, you're shaking. Oh, it's, I'm so dreadfully afraid. Of oh, what? Oh, Arthur, it may come back. But Billy, we are not certain it is gone. Oh, I shall catch a fever. The draught coming up from under the floorboards. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh. Oh. Now, let us go to bed. And with a calm mind, Billy. Remember, the gentleman was most positive in his assurance. He said, Hyman could do us no harm. But the gentleman is not here, Arthur. And we are. Oh, uh, what's happened? I'm not something down. I caught my elbow. Uh, oh. Can you bring a candle up here? The land is. Yes, yes, and don't be alarmed. Well, I am not alarmed, Billy. I have nearly hurt my elbow. Oh, well, there's no harm done. You've knocked the Japanese scimitar off the wall. Yes, yes, yes. The hook has worked loose and fallen out. Mm. Now, can you take this thing from me, Billy? Yes. Thank you. Ah. And put it on the table downstairs. Yes. I shall deal with it in the daylight. Come along, come along. It grows late. Uh, ten past eleven. Oh. I must be on my way home, Stephen. Oh, must you? What a pity. A pleasant evening. It was indeed. You will remember to order the tickets for the Queen's Hall. Mm. There will, I imagine, be quite a run on them. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Huh. Uh, where did I put your coat? Ah. Allow me, John. Yeah, thank you. John, I, I wish you'd tell me, in the last resort, what could Hyman do? Do? To possess himself of the violin. I'm not sure. The man is almost certainly boasting, and in that may lie his salvation. 
But you must never underestimate the power of a violent passion. Oh, oh quite, quite. I, I remember a time in Scandinavia, was it not? Ah, the camp of the dog. Uh, still, that was a case of sexual obsession. Yes, but my dear man, the modern world has gone sadly astray. We are possessed of an energy of which sex is only one manifestation. It's as if a pianist, given the whole range of the keyboard, were to spend his life playing scales with one finger. Mm. A state of affairs which must be a grave disappointment to the deity. You mean... All that... forms of creative energy are one. And any desire that has grown too strong is dangerous. For the mind, failing to grasp the beloved object by normal means, may break free and attempt something else. <laughs> oh, it's, it's either too late, or I have drunk altogether too much claret. <laughs> oh, you defeat me, John. And don't let it distress you, my dear fellow. It's of no consequence. Hyman leaves by the morning boat for Italy, and there is nothing to fear. Good night. I can see myself out. Arthur, are you awake, Arthur? Billy, oh. you should not be out of bed. See in the morning. And you've forgotten to put your bedroom slippers on. Oh, I could not sleep. And you are in your dressing gown? Oh, yes. Oh, dear me, yes. You have been up, I think. The moonlight woke me. And nothing else? The moon is full. Arthur, there was a shadow on my blind. The wind shaking the lime trees. I tell you, brother, something left from the roof. A cat, then? <gasps> yes. And why not a cat? Arthur, it cannot get in, Arthur. Why should it want to get in? Cats roam the empty streets. Oh, and soon no doubt we shall hear their abominable screeching. Listen. Yes, yes. Then you were back. Oh. And it did. I can see it. Sitting on the pavement. What? A huge grey thing with yellow eyes. Oh. Hardly they flash. This is not natural. No, oh, come, come, old fellow. It is entirely natural for a cat to have glowing eyes. It occurs in all the feline tribes. Still... Oh. Since you are distressed, we will get rid of it. Now pass me the water jug there from hmm? the basin. Oh, yes. oh. oh, dear, dear, dear. Uh, be careful, it's full and very heavy. Oh, I can manage, just uh, lift it clear of the ledge. Uh, oh, shoo, shoo, go away. Has it gone? Yes. Strange. Why didn't it cry out? And where did it go? It doesn't matter. Arthur? I poured the water directly over it. And yet, Billy, the thing appeared to melt into the ground. The shape dissolved. But cats move fast. And we both we, we both we, we both have bad eyesight. Oh, back to bed. Oh, it would be folly to make ourselves ill. I'd better shut the window. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. We must not be foolish and imagine things, Arthur. After all, there is a strong bolt on the windows, and you have locked the door. Uh, Arthur? Uh, good night. Why are you listening? I am not listening. I am exhausted as you are. Oh, I shall sleep. What can you hear? Oh, nothing, upon my word. But I can. A pattering, scratching noise, as if... Something were climbing up the drain pipe. The wind. Huh? The, the furniture. Oh, we're becoming absurd, old fellow. Men are too bad. We shall laugh at this in the morning. Oh, listen. Can you not hear? You can't hear us. There is no mistaking now. Someone has touched the violin. Gee. Oh, God, how did they get in? How can we get help? Summon the police? I will not suffer this. Come back, Arthur. Oh, Arthur, oh, consider. We are two old men. We cannot fight them. We have the advantage of our own ground. And surprise. Now, courage, brother. Put out the candle and follow me. Oh, I shall fall in the dark. Hold my arm. Oh, no, no, no. You hinder me. Put your hand on my shoulder if oh. you must. He may have weapons, Arthur. A revolver. And we have no defense. Now move carefully down the stairs. Yes. I'm ready to put it. What? 
What? Think. Hmm? The Japanese symbol fell from the wall. Where did you put it? On the table at the foot of the staircase. <laughs> but you cannot see. The handle is gold. It should gleam even in this light. Uh, oh, yes. Now I have it. Ah, we can protect ourselves. I beg you. Again, you must move faster. Brother, brother, where have you gone? Here. Oh, follow me. This is too dangerous. They shall not steal my treasure. Where are they? No light in the shop. No sound. There is something in the back room. Crouching near the cabinet. Small, formless. And then to this! Oh, my God, my God, my Saviour, my Lord, deliver us from evil, not into temptation, valley of the shadows, deliver us from Light the candles. What? what? Light the candles. We cannot remain in oh, the dark. Oh, I have no matches. Well, open the curtain, then, and let the moonlight in. Oh. Where are they? Where have they gone? Help us, dear Lord, we have no help. I struck against some living thing, of that I am convinced. Oh, put down the weapon, you're frightening me. Oh, Arthur, Arthur. You were at my shoulder. Did you see nothing? I... Well... Oh, Arthur. I swear to heaven. It looked like a cat. Come over here. Huh? Oh. All's well. The Gurnerius is safe. Safe, yes, safe. Are we safe? And yet that's curious. It has most certainly been moved. Huh? Look... It has fallen sideways on the shelf. Oh, where is it killing you? You keep it upstairs, brother. The cabinet is securely locked, oh. but there are deep scratches on the wood. I told you so. There was an animal scrabbling at the lock. Brother, the door cannot be opened, yet the scratches are inside. Impossible. Look through the glass. Huh? There could be no doubt. Oh. In the name of pity, what was it? Who knows? It screamed. It screamed like a soul wailing in hell. I couldn't see the form clearly. It lay huddled in the shadows. I brought the blade down on... <gasps> what? Oh, Billy. Look. I've cut off its paw. Good morning, James. Good morning, Dr. Silence. Nice day, sir. Take your coat. Ah, thank you. And how are you? Oh, John. Thank goodness. Oh, I've had the most appalling shock. What is it? I went to the Queen's Hall early to book our tickets. I found the place in uproar. I scarcely know how to tell you. Hyman is... Not dead. Oh, no, no, no. Worse than a sense. He was found unconscious in his hotel bedroom an hour ago. There's been some ghastly accident. Oh, John. John, he has lost his right arm. Oh, dear oh, God. The hotel manager's frantic. There's no sensible explanation. The man himself is delirious, and whether he fought with some intruder or was attacked outside the hotel... I must go at once. What's that you say? And yet... Why should I go? There's no virtue in distressing two old men. And I'm too late to save Isidore Hyman. Oh, you speak in riddles. What, what, do, what do you mean? Can you guess how this terrible thing happened? I can do more than guess, but there's no help. What? And he is not the first great artist who has strayed into the hidden areas of the soul and so destroyed himself. <laughs> 